Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We glorify you in this place. Come on, just for a moment, if we could just lift our hands all over this place. Those that are watching us online, come on, make that place that you're watching us from a sanctuary. Come on, just begin to give God glory. Begin to honor the Lord within this place. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. So we pour out a praise. We pour out a praise. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. So we pour out a praise. We pour out. give you honor and praise in this place and I just we just ask you God to move in a special way upon this service God continue to touch our hearts let the word of God uh, minister to every heart that's listening that's watching this morning from uh, YouTube and Facebook we thank you God for what you're doing within this place God continue to encourage us in Jesus name amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, give God a great praise clap within his place. Amen. Praise the Lord. As you guys remain standing, I want to welcome everyone out. What a great celebration this morning. For those that are watching us online, we welcome you to our service. You are very much a part of what we're doing here and so important to what God is doing within our ministry. And we want to acknowledge you, all of those that are watching around the world, as well, all of those that have made a great effort to make it this morning to our service. We are so grateful. This week, we're celebrating Thanksgiving. And on behalf of our, our church, Victory Outreach Kansas City, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Think of uh, your church members when you're getting down on those good, good plates of food. Praise the Lord. I want you to turn with me this morning to Galatians, there in the book of Galatians chapter 4, and we'll begin reading just one verse here this morning. Praise the Lord. There in Galatians chapter 4, verse 19, the Bible reads this way. Paul said, my little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. Go ahead and be seated within this place. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to read it one more time. The Bible says, my little children for whom I, I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. In you. Here Paul is speaking to the Galatian church and he, he communicates something very important, something that I believe we've been hearing over the last few weeks uh, about being an image bearer. And here he, he talks uh, about the fact that, that his purpose was that Christ would be formed on the inside of the Galatian church. Are you with me here this morning? See, it's so important to know that we, 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 we have to continue to go forward, that as the people of God, we, we must press on. It's important to recognize that evil always wants to creep in, that evil always wants to come in and distort us and, and discourage us. But it's so important that not only come in us, but evil wants to come out of us. The Bible tells us that it, it's in our heart, the abundance of our heart, where evil comes out. Are you with me this morning? And we have to continually pray to stay in the spirit, to walk in the spirit so that we won't be given over to the evil nature that is within us. Are you with me here this morning? See, we have to understand that I, I believe and I'm convinced of the fact that as we've been hearing that we are those image bearers, that the world is the pulpit that God has given us to preach to. It's 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 what we preach. It's it's and it's not just what we preach, but it's how we live that God is really focused on. This morning, I want to really reiterate that to you as well. See, it's important to know that we we have a target as Victory Outreach. We have a target. God has given us a target to reach the inner cities of the world. 
And it's so important that we hit the target that God has given us to minister to. God has been teaching us on the, on the fact that we are those image bearers, that our lives are, are God's message to the world. And we have to understand that all of us, all of us that are a part of this ministry, all of us that are a part of that third wave of revival that's taking place within our church, that we have to recognize that we, we are, we are, uh, God has, has given us a mandate to model to the world a life of sacrifice, a life of commitment, a life of grace, a life of love, and a life of Jesus to the world. See, I believe that when we think about this third wave, that all of us are included. It was two things that God began to show me about the third wave. The third wave is this. There's a third wave of revival that is inclusive. It includes everybody within our ministry. Nobody's excluded from the third wave of revival that's taking place in our ministry. God is on a move, and he's doing something new. He's doing something great within our ministry, and all of us. Are included the the victory homes our 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 our, 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 our gang generation we have our our uh, uh, OG generation we have our pioneer our our our, our um, pioneer our Joshua generation all of us are included in this third wave of revival that is taking place within our ministry but then there is secondly there is a third wave generation that's on the rise are you with me here this morning See, there's a third wave of revival that is inclusive, but then there's a third wave generation that is the people that is very exclusive. It's the ones that God is raising up in this generation, that God is giving the mantle to, that God is saying for those that are uh, 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 in our victory homes, for those that God is grabbing a hold of in our gang ministry, that God is saying, listen, it's your turn. Like my brother was saying, it's your turn to take the mantle. It's your turn, you know what, to turn on the commitment for God and to do the work that God has called us to do. See, I recognize that there are many who have gone before us that have already sacrificed, that have already committed their lives, and there are many of us that are here within this place that are a part of that third wave generation, our young people, our gang ministry, that God is saying to you and I, it's our turn to commit our lives. It's our turn to sacrifice. Are you with me? Galatians 4 and 19, what we see here, Paul saying, he says, my dear children, my children, I, I, for whom I, I am again in labor and birthed again until Christ is forming you. What, what we realize and recognize here and we realize within the lives of believers is that we as believers are called to grow. It's so important that we understand that God has called us not to stay the same. He's called us to mature, to grow in our faith, to grow in our wisdom, to grow in our love for God and in our love for people. See, growth is, is we have to recognize that growth is both a natural progression and it's also work. When we look at, at a baby or a child, most children grow naturally most times. They start out very small and many of them start out innocent. Are you with me? They start out very small and they start out innocent. And, and, and if they're taken care of, if they're, you know what, in good health, then most times they'll progress and most times they will grow. In the same way as believers who are born again, we become infants in Christ when we're born again. And as time progresses and we learn and we observe, we grow. If we're healthy and we're taken care of, Naturally, as believers, we grow. It should be a natural progression. As time progresses, the more time you spend in God and the more years you spend with God in relationship with him, you and I should be growing. Is anybody growing within this place? But then there's growth that also requires work and growth that requires challenge. Even naturally, when we think about our lives and our, our bodies naturally, once we hit a certain age, right, many of us stop growing. When I go to buy shoes, I don't have to worry about wondering if my shoe size have changed because, let's what, I, I've stopped growing. As an adult, there are certain areas that we stop growing in. 
Most of us, when we aren't, when we, when we, when, when, uh, when we think about our height, most of us have stopped growing. We can give up. Many of us, we can give up. I know for me, I can give up those dreams of being eight feet tall, of being able to dunk on, on, uh, on a, a 10 foot goal. I can give up those dreams because I've stopped growing. Are you with me? We can hang up those dreams. We stop growing naturally. But where we stop growing naturally, we have to pick up with work. And I, 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 if, if, you're not, if you're not, then we start growing the wrong way. If we don't work at growing the right way, then guess what? We'll start growing the wrong way physically. Are you with me? We'll start going the wrong way. See, when we stop growing naturally, we have to work that we don't grow the wrong way. And see, there comes a time in our growth as believers that requires work. It requires challenge. See, here in this scripture, Paul says, I labor for growth. I labor for maturity in you. See, there should constantly be moments in our lives of challenge and moments of change. I want to talk to you this morning about being perfected. Moments of change, moments of challenge. I, I would dare to say you should always be confronted with people. You should always be confronted with situations. You should always be confronted with times that challenge you to grow personally and, think, and, and people and seasons that challenge you to grow spiritually in your faith. Are you with me? See, I've learned, and, uh, and I've learned that without challenge, many of us will stay the same, right? When you're in the gym working out, we got some people in even basketball or, or doing, playing sports. Many times if you don't practice or if you don't uh, put, put more, especially with like, uh, I like lifting weights. So like if you don't put more pressure or challenge yourself, then pretty much you can expect to stay the same. But it's when you challenge yourself when you put a little bit more weight or you put in a little bit more practice that you find yourself growing, getting better, progressing. Are you with me within this place? To progress, to grow, you must challenge yourself. You have to stretch your faith and you have to learn to be consistent. See, challenge is not despised because in, in, in being perfected, we have to understand that it's God's purpose. God's purpose for perfection for you and I. I'm convinced that God has, and that's, that's I'm going to give you a few points. This is going to be my first point. God's purpose is perfection. When we think about being perfected, when we think about that word perfected, we have to understand that God's purpose for our lives, God's purpose for our journey, God's purpose for things that we face and things that we go through is, is the point of perfection. Nothing less. I'm convinced that God has purpose for each and every one of our lives. I, 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 I want you to know, if you don't know that this morning, that God has a purpose for you. That you're here this morning, that you're listening online this morning, not by coincidence or not by chance, but you're listening. You're here in the sanctuary this morning. You're saved. You're serving God because God has purpose for you and I. He has purpose for you. Very important to understand it in everything, and especially our pain, the tests that we face. And God has purpose for each and every one of them. See, God's purpose for our journey, the great and the small, the good and the bad, is that we would be perfected. Now, we understand that eventually all who believe, all who believe will one day at the end of all things, Jesus will perfect our bodies. Are you with me? Philippians 3 and 21 tells us this, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Come on, somebody should get excited about that. That means that old slow foot, that old sloop foot that you don't like. That, old, uh, uh, that, that beat up body, that abused body that many of us have, have beat up all, over all these years. The Bible tells us that God is going to trade it in, that God is going to give to us a new body, a perfected body, a glorious body when we get to the end of all things. But that's not the perfection that I want to focus in on this morning. 
See, the Bible, when it speaks of perfection, it can be defined as wholeness. It can be defined as, as holiness. This is why the word of God tells us in Matthew 5 and 48, Jesus said, be perfect. Therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. Here we realize that Jesus doesn't intend for us to be perfect in a sense of being sinless. He doesn't intend for us to be perfect in a sense of being without fault. But what he means is that we should reflect the perfectness of God. That we should reflect that just like our father is perfect, we should in nature and in character reflect a perfect God. Are you with me? Another word that I love to use and I really want to uh, try to draw out this morning is maturity. When we think about the word perfect and being perfected, the Bible uses the word maturity interchangeably or as the same meaning. Perfection, maturity. One of the things that is so important to understand is that when we look at a, 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 a life and a believer, it, it's easy to identify areas that are perfected. See, perfection and being perfected is evidenced by Christ in us. Paul says here in scripture in Galatians 4 and 19, he tells us that his, his goal, his purpose was that Christ be formed in the believers. Here in this scripture, Paul shows us that maturity in a believer is evidenced by Christ in us. The sign of spiritual maturity is Christ formed in us. People are able to identify how mature or people are able to identify how immature we are by the amount of Christ that they see in us. None of us are perfect. I'm here to tell you we're all being perfected. Are you with me this morning? So from time to time, it, 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 it's probably likely that when we look at one another, there are areas in our lives that we can identify with each other that have not been perfected. Are you with me? This is where we need to focus our prayers on. And I want to say this this morning. This is not the areas where we need to badmouth people about. This is not the area where we need to uh, judge people in, area, in those areas. These are the areas that we need to pray for. These are the areas that we need to help uh, uh, others bring up. These are the areas that we need to, especially if we're leaders, we need to work with them. Are you with me? But for all of us, these are the areas, they're areas. And, and, and then at the same time, remember, I was talking to one of the brothers and, I, and he, we were talking about, you know, just uh, faults in individuals, just general. And he began to talk about, you know what, uh, I know, you know, he made a point and I thought about my own life. Most times you can find more good in people than you can find bad. Everybody's got something, you know, if I, I, you know, anybody who knows me or any, you know, anybody who's close to me knows that there's something about me probably that you don't like. But it, there probably is more things about me that you, if you really get to know me, that you will find out that you like about me than the other things that you don't like. And I'm saying that to the point that with everyone, there's probably in every person's life, with every relationship, something that we don't like about each other. But for the most part, there's most of the time more good than there is bad in a person. Are you with me? See, for all of us, there are areas where we can see good. And in, in, in that, we see God in each and every one of us. See, for the believer, there is no other way to gauge maturity, the maturity of a person, by how, but by how much of Christ they have in them. It's not accurate in measuring how long they've been in the church. It's, it's not even accurate in, in, in measuring how old they are. It's only determined by the character of Christ that they reflect. See, I've met some young men. I've met some young men who have who had so much Christ in them, who reflected the nature, the character, the loving character, forgiving nature and, and, and commitment of Christ. And at the same time, I met older 
individuals, older men who battle and react to the smallest of things, who are immature in some of the, the, uh, the, the, some of the areas that you thought they should have been passed. At the same time, I've met older women who, who, who uh, have been given opportunity to master a situation. They've been given opportunity to master a marriage. They've been given opportunity to master a ministry, and they just can't get it right. But you'll meet the same or, or other young women that are in, their, in areas of, of their lives that they, they matured in those areas where they're able to master marriage, where they're able to master ministry, where they're able to master situations where they don't react to situations and they're able to reflect the character and they're able to reflect Christ in them. Are you with me? See, it's not always, it's not always the point of, you know what, how old a person is. Are you with me? I met little, I met older men, older men who still play boys games. Right? I, for, for me personally, you know, I, I used to sag. I used to, uh, you know, when I was a teenager, I used to do certain things. And when I see older guys still doing you know, men my age or men in their 40s or men, you know, even older that still trying to, you know, do what I was doing when I was 18 or 15, then I see, you know what, that they're immature in that area. It's not always age that determines the, the, uh, the maturity in a person or the perfection in a person. I've seen older men that still, you know what, trying to play with, uh, you know, trying to, uh, sneak around with women. You know what? You have to get to a certain age the way you say, you know what? I, 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 I'm past that. I'm, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm past that. I'm on some grown man stuff. Are you with me? It's, it's one woman for me. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm not still trying to play around and do, you know what, little kid. That's uh, immature things. And I'm, I'm not a perfect individual by far any means. But I'm saying it's some things that we should be past. Some things that as, as men in a certain age, the age that I am, not that I'm real old, but I've learned, you know what, some things I, I still won't do. I don't, I, you know, I leave that to my sons, you know what I mean? And they're still, you know what, immature in some areas, and, and, and it's rightfully so. I think it's so important, so important that we understand it in those areas those areas of immaturity, when we identify them in people and we identify them in men and women that God has given to us, that we learn to work with them and to help them, to help one another. See, because my second point is this, that no perfection is accomplished without others. Nobody can be perfected. Nobody can be perfected without other people helping them. The Bible tells us that the Galatians at this point, when you read the book of Galatians and you read into what Paul is communicating to this church, you see that they were at the point of drifting. Paul had went there, the Bible tells us, on his first missionary journey, and he began to plant churches. He planted churches there and he started the work and he established the work there in that region of Galatia. And he began to establish believers, and he taught them, and he discipled them, and he labored for them. And then two other times on a missionary journey, it's recorded in the Bible, he goes throughout the region to strengthen them. And despite all of his efforts, despite all of his labor, they turned again to bondage, turned again to legalism. I want to tell you, see, there's a, there's a bondage. There's a slavery that is self-induced. Nobody has to provoke us. They don't have to handcuff us. They don't have to force us to it. There's a bondage that, that many of us make a choice to be in. When we think about our lives today, some of us are in bondage that nobody forced us to be in. Some of us are in bondage that we can't blame the devil we can't blame on the devil. Some of us are in bondage that we can't blame on a woman or we can't blame on a man. Some of us are in bondage because we made a choice to be in that bondage. We made a choice to go back to being entangled again in that same bondage. 
Self-induced bondage. Self-induced slavery. See, the Galatians had at one point been in bondage. They had been enslaved to a behavior and enslaved to an action-based legalism. But through proper teaching, through solid discipleship, and through faith in Jesus and the gospel preached to them, they have been made free. The Bible tells us this in John 8 and 36. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. 8 and 31 and 32 says this. So he said to the Jews who had believed him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. What they had done, as Paul describes in his writing, they had, like many of us do, placed themselves back into bondage. They had turned again. Once again, to the destructive and seducing powers of those who desired to lead them astray. They had turned back to follow those false teachers. Some of us know that are here in this place, we know we shouldn't be going back, hanging out with those same group of people. We know that we shouldn't be getting back into that same destructive relationship. We know that we shouldn't be going and, and, and trying to uh, uh, play around with those drugs and those cigarettes and those certain areas that we know if we play around with it and we, we give ourselves a little tease that eventually we're going to be entangled and in bondage with it. Are you with me? They had turned back to those false teachers. They had, they had turned back to those individuals that wanted to lead them astray, that wanted to lead them into the wrong. They had been taught grace, and they had turned back to legalism. They had been in a, a backslid, a possibly a backslid position. The idea of a works-based works relationship with God. See, it's very important to realize this morning that God, when he frees us, that when he frees us, that God gives us an opportunity to stay free by the individuals that we follow and by the individuals that we're connected to. And many of us this morning are connected or, or that are listening, may be connected to some individuals that are leading us in the wrong direction and are placing us back in that bondage. But it's very important that we realize, like Paul says here, that there are those that God places in our lives that help us and those that labor for us. See, we must realize that we come where we've come here today is not a finished product. God is not through with us yet, but according to the Bible, there's so much more that God has for you and I. The Bible tells us a hope for the future more than we can see, think, or even imagine. And although God is not finished with us, for many of us, we are so much further than where we used to be. In fact, for many of us, we're better because of those that God has put around us, those that have labored on our behalf. See, we have to understand that no perfection, no perfection is accomplished without others. Paul says here that he labored and he suffered birthing pains for them again. That he travailed with birthing pains, birthing pains, so that Christ would be formed in them. He discipled them. He encouraged them. He helped them. He prayed for them. He called them. He spent all night uh, in travailing for them. He worked for them so that Christ would be formed in them. Thank God for those who travail for us. Thank God for those who labor on our behalf. Thank God for those who pray, who work, who call, who continue to work so that Christ can be seen in us. Any parent, and especially mothers, know the difficulty that Paul speaks about here, the difficulty of birth. I can remember being there to witness, you know what, witness our, our last baby being born, little Noah. And I can remember, you know what, there, and it was in the middle of the night. You know, Shana uh, went, uh, went to the bathroom, and then all of a sudden her water broke. And it was, you know, in like 3 or 4 in the morning, I think right around that time. And then, you know, it was just a, a crazy experience. You know, the birthing pain the contractions that she began to feel. We rushed to the hospital, 
And then he was ready to come out. And, you know, it was just a, a crazy experience. He laid her on that bed, on that uh, doctor's bed. And the doctors began to talk to her. And I stood there on the side of her. And there at that place, it was too late for her to turn back. It was too late for her to say, you know what? You know what? Now I give up. And now I don't want to have this baby. <laughs> she, she did. My wife, she was like, she was like oh, I give up. <laughs> I don't want to do it no more. <laughs> And the doctor, it was a, little, a lady, she was like, she was like real stern, like, girl, like, uh, like, it's too late now, you can't, like, you can't give up. It was funny, when we, when I think about it now, I was thinking about it, and it was, it was, I was cracking up. She was on, I can't give up, or I got him ready to give up. He was already, you know what, ready to come out. And. and what happens is when, they, when they're ready to come out, when they want to come out, when you get to that place of the baby being born and they're coming, right, it, it, it's, it's, it, it's too late to give up. Once you start feeling that pain of contractions, and, and I, I, you know what, it's too late to give up at that point. Although you may want to at that point, it's too late to give up. Once you're is it dilated to where you need to be, it is like an eight or a nine where you have to be dilated for it. Nah, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Where you, when you're dilated and your cervix is opened up and you, your baby's ready to come out, it's too late to give up. Right? What it takes out of a mother is endurance. It takes hard work to push that baby out. And I'm here to tell you once she had, once I, once I saw that work that went into having him, and you know what, it was a beautiful baby coming out, and you know what, I almost shed a tear, and I was broken. Like, it was a beautiful experience. Man, a beautiful experience to be there, to witness it. And once I saw that work that, uh, that went into it, I, 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 I really had a new respect for my wife and a new respect for all women. And I, I commend and I applaud any woman that has gone through that and has, has had a baby. Because that, that was a lot of work. I was, you know, I was like, man, it was so much work that went into that. Pushing that baby out and, and, and uh, going through those pains of childbirth. I had a new respect. And what Paul expresses here about him establishing, about him teaching, and about him discipling the believers there is he, that, uh, he expressed that same feeling. That the work of, of birthing the church there, the, the work of establishing the Christians there was hard work. It required endurance. Once they began to come, it was too late for him to give up. He had to continue on so that Christ could be seen in him, seen in them. And work was not foreign to Paul. The Bible tells us in Colossians 1 and 29 that he says this as well. He said, but we proclaim him, admonishing and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. Yeah. To this end, listen what he says, to this end I also labor, striving with all his energy, working powerfully in me. See, Paul discipled them. Paul helped them. Paul spent all night praying for them. He fed them. He, he did all of the work. He, he suffered pain and he suffered toil so that he could see Christ on the inside of them. I'm here to tell you there are many who have discipled us. There are many who have helped us. There are many who have spent all night praying for us. Many who have brought us into their homes and fed us. Let us live with them. Oh, thank God for those who strive for Jesus to be seen in us and labor on our behalf. Paul says he labored. He labored so that Jesus will be seen in them. The Bible tells us that Jesus also, Jesus also took the punishment of sin, took the weight of sin, took uh, humanity upon his back. With humanity on his back, uh, uh, Jesus with 
us on our hearts and humanity on his mind. He took the beating. He took the punishment so that we can experience freedom from sin for the joy, the Bible tells us, the joy set before us or set before him. He endured the cross. Hebrews 12 and 2. See, the purpose was that Christ would be formed in us. Jesus wants to be formed in us, not that we look like him on the outside, but that we look like him on the inside. See, none of us are already perfect. None of us are already perfect. What I, what I have to have you understand, and this is so important, that perfection is a lifelong journey. This is another point, that, the third point, that's perfection if it's a lifelong journey. Very quickly, Philippians 3 and 12 tells us it, not that I've already obtained in an amplified version, this goal of being Christ-like or have already been made perfect, but I actively press on so that I may take hold of that perfection for which Christ took hold of me and made me his own. See, it takes time. It takes time to perfect every area in our lives but then there's some areas that we should mature in real fast. Certain things, certain people that make you mature faster. Usually they say with, you know what, with little babies, when you have a little babies and you have older kids uh, that are their siblings, that the little kids will mature faster. I can remember Noah, right? He, we have four other kids besides him, and he's the baby. And, you know, he matured, to me, he matured real fast. He began to talk real clear, real fast. And, I, you know, what many people would say, oh, he's trying to catch up to his older siblings. He would hang with them and, you know, would jump on them and run with them. And he's trying to, you know what, be like them. And it pushed him to mature faster. I remember they used to say in the neighborhood, you know what, and, and even now people that you meet that are maybe young, you know what, young people, younger but they hang around with the older older guys they will say you know what oh he you know what he acts a little or he got an old soul or he acts a little older because he hanged around or he he, he hung around older people are you with me come on you know what i'm talking about they hung he hung out with the ogs so he acted older and when, many times when you have kids, I can remember when I, when I had a kid, 20 years old was my first kid, and I can remember, you know what, I was probably a little bit more mature than other 20-year-olds 20 20 years, 20 year because having that child forced me to, to mature a little faster. Are you with me? When you have kids, most times it should cause you to mature faster. Most times, not all the time, but most times it's to cause you to mature faster. It stops you from just thinking about, just thinking that everything's about just you. My point is this, is there some things, you know what, that take time, days, weeks, years to master. And let me tell you, God is still working on all of us. Thank God for God not giving up on us. Thank God that God is patient with us. Thank God that God loves us, that he forgives us, that he continues to work with us. There's certain things, you know what, that God continues to work with us on. Years and years, the, the, the process of sanctification, the process of perfection is a lifelong journey. God will never be perfect. We'll never, you know what, be, uh, we'll never have everything together but we work towards it. We work towards it and we take it day by day and we continue to get better and we continue to dig a little deeper. We continue to pray, we continue to worship, we continue to try to do right by people and we continue each and every day to get better. But then there, you know what, there are things that take a long time, you know what, uh, to work on. Certain areas that we don't even know that are in the inside of us that we that God takes time to, you know what, sanctify and to cleanse out of us and, and, and to take out of us and put good things in us. But then there's certain things, certain things, you know what, and, and, and being around, you know what, certain people being in certain situations that should cause us to mature a little faster. There's certain things that we shouldn't continue to struggle with that shouldn't take us years to get over. 
I'm here to tell you, you know what, once I, once I got tired, you know what, of that, those drugs, once I got tired of living that crazy type of lifestyle, it didn't take me a long time to kick it out of my life. Once I got tired of that bad relationship, it didn't take me a long time to escape and to get away from it. It was one, two days. I said, you know what, that's it, and I'm done, and I want God, and I want to go after God, and I want to be all that God has called me to be. See, there's some things, some situations, some things, and you know what, that we shouldn't continue to struggle with. Some things, you know what, that should cause us, uh, some situations and some seasons that should cause us to mature a little faster. Are you with me? We have to know that it is a lifelong journey. Perfection is a lifelong journey, but there are many things that we shouldn't, you know what, you shouldn't still be uh, 80 years old, still, you know, still struggling with, you know what, uh, doing certain things. Certain things you should be past. If you've been a part of the ministry, you know what, sir, uh, 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 any short of t- uh, amount of time, you should have, you know what, got rid of certain things. Certain things you should have said, you know what, I'm, I'm one and I'm done. One and I'm done. I'm not going to continue to uh, struggle with it. I'm not going to continue to battle with this thing. But I'm going to be done with it. It is a lifelong journey, and thank God that God has continued, co- co- continued to be committed to perfecting us. The Bible tells us that God has continued to, ref, uh, co- that God is committed to perfecting us. It says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the alpha and omega, omega. What he started in us, he is committed to finish. See, we have to understand in closing that you can't give up or you can't give in because God hasn't given up on you. Philippians 1 and 6 tells us this, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God said, you know what, I'm, Paul said, I'm, I'm confident that God won't give up on me. The worship or the band can come. God won't give up on you. That thing that you're struggling with, that although you may be down about it, although you may feel, you know what, that it's not perfect yet. Listen, God hasn't given up working on you. God is not committed to follow through to the end, to the wheels fall off and beyond. Are you with me? See, some people, and I heard a, a preacher say that some people, you know what, with good intentions will stick around for, you know what, you, you're in the hospital, you know what, a few few days, you know what, they'll come around, you know what, a few days, but be in a hospital for months, be in a hospital for, you know what, uh, for, for weeks, and, and you'll, you'll start to see that circle dwindle down. See, people, and, it, and it, it is no fault to people, but people are unable to stick by, stick by you most times for the long haul. To stick by you to the end. Now, you have certain people that, you know what, that are in love with you, that will stick by you, that will, or your ride or dies. But let me tell you, thank God that God is committed to stick by us. That the, the rough times that we go through, the tough times that we go through. Some people, you know what, will be with you when everything's good, will be with you when you're doing right. And then as soon as you do something that upsets them, they will turn your, their back on you. But God's not like that. Thank God that he's committed to be with us to the end. That he's committed. And Paul said, I'm confident. I'm confident that he who started this good work with me will be, will be uh, with me into the completion or into the, the perfection of it. So we have to understand and you have to be encouraged this morning for those who feel like, you know what, sometimes nobody's with you. Sometimes, you know what, the, per- the people that you depend on to be with you, to support you, to encourage you are never there. I'm here to tell you that God has never left you, that God will always be with you, that there's nothing that can separate you from his love. There's nothing that can uh, have him to turn his back on you. God is for you and God is with you and he's committed to be your ride or die. Are you with me? Committed to to the completion. Committed to the completion. This is what God is, this is why I believe God has been teaching us on the fact that we're image bearers. We're image bearers. God wants Christ to be formed in us. Our pastors, our leaders are working with us. They're praying for us. 
they're, they're, they're uh, calling us. They're, you know what? They're talking to us. They're discipling us. They're preaching to us, not so that we can look good. Not so that we can be a grand old church, but we want what we want and every man and every woman and every young person within this place is that Christ be formed in us, that we reflect the image of God to this city, to this world, to this region. And it's so important this morning that we understand that Christ wants to be formed in us, but on our part, we need to have endurance. James 1 and 4 tells us that fastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete and lack nothing. Perseverance. We need perseverance. We need endurance. I'm here to tell you this season may not be ideal. This season may not be, you know, at the, most, the, the best season circumstantially in our lives. It may seem like it's the least perfect season that we're in because of this COVID, because of, you know what, everything that's going on. Many of us, you know what, are, are maybe facing trials, facing situations, facing challenges. It's not the ideal season that we might find ourselves in. But it's so important that we learn that endurance is needed, that perseverance is needed, that seasons change that times change, that although the season may not be perfect, it may be less than perfect. God's end result is perfection. Paul said, I labor. I labor with birthing pains. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in labor. I'm travailing. I'm working. You know what? And it, and it hurts to disciple, to love and forgive, to encourage. But what I have in mind is not what I see before me. What I have in mind is that Christ will be formed in you, that God will be seen in you. That at the end of this working, at the end of this preaching, at the end of this teaching, that Christ will be formed in you. This is the purpose of, 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 of this church. This is the purpose of, this, of our preaching. Not so that we can look good, all the just look good but so that we can see Christ in us so that Christ can be formed in us I want you all over this place just to begin to lift your hands here within this place those that are watching come on God's purpose is that Christ will be formed in us that Christ will be formed in us but for many of us what God needs and what we need is endurance. What we need is perseverance. What we need is continue on to continue to press forward, to continue on. And this morning, I believe God wants to give to us that strength, the strength to continue on, the strength to continue to press forward, the strength to continue to persevere so that Christ would be formed in us come on begin to open your heart to the Lord come on begin to lift your hands within his place come on worship him this morning got to continue to go forward we have to continue to press on come on lift your hands within this place come on let God do a deep work in you so that Christ will be formed oh we need you Lord oh we honor you God I just want to move your heart hallelujah oh we need you Jesus Christ formed in you. Christ formed in us. Oh, in Jesus' name. Come on, the result. The end result. The purpose is Christ formed in us. Come on, worship him. Oh, hallelujah. You are. Lord. Oh, we need you, God. I 
Thank you, Jesus. Glory to you, God. Come on, lift your hands. Christ formed in us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. to you God oh thank you Jesus come on let's just spend a moment just think about those that have labored for us come on this week of Thanksgiving come on what a great time to thank God for never giving up on us for th to thank God for those that he's placed around us that would labor for us that would help us that encourage us that build us up oh we thank you Jesus we thank you, God, for our pastors. We thank you, God, for our leaders, Lord. We thank you, God, for our founders, for this ministry, God, that you use to help us, God, to make us better, to make our families better, God. Oh, we thank you this morning. Come on, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for never giving up on us. God, we give you glory this morning, God. God, we give you glory this morning, God. We could have been, we should have been so many other places, God, if it had not been for your grace. God, if it had not been for your mercy upon us. Oh, we thank you this morning, God, for forgiving us. We thank you, God, for using us. We thank you, God, for giving us a place in your kingdom in your, your body, God. Oh, come on, thank the Lord. Come on, he deserves our glory. Come on, he deserves our thanksgiving. Oh, this morning. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We glorify you, God. We lift you up in this place. We exalt you, God. Oh, we honor you, Lord. Come on, give him praise this morning. Come on, lift your hands this morning. Worship him. Oh, glory to you, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This morning we celebrate. We celebrate all those men and women that you brought before us, our victory homes that are being perfected. What a great great example of, of men and women that have given their lives to the Lord and to the work of, of perfection. This morning, God, I, I believe, has shown us a great example. And this morning, there's so many more of us, so many more of us that God is, is, has his hand upon, so many more of us that God has placed people around us to help us to get to that place of perfection. I want to encourage you morning to continue on that we may not be there yet there may be many areas in our lives that you know what we see and we recognize that we still need to work on I'm here to tell you this morning that God has you in a place and on, on, on a journey of perfection the journey is perfection and God's determined committed not to give up on you, not to give up on your family, not to give up on your marriage, on your singleness. You keep going, you keep riding, you keep, you know what, coming. You still stay plugged in, stay committed to God. Don't give up. Like Paul was telling the church there that we're in a backslidden position, continue to go on. Because not only has God not cut, not, uh, chosen not to give up on you but there's people around you there's leaders that are in place there are people that love each and every one of us that God has put in place here that are committed to continue to preach the gospel to us that are committed to continue to encourage us to pray for us to work with us and oh thank God for those people thank God for those people that God has placed in our lives come on give God a great praise clap and a shout within this place. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. With that, I want to thank everyone for coming. Wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving this week with your family. Amen. Be safe and consider yourself dismissed. Praise the Lord.